Hi, my name is John McKendra. I'm a senior here at Cal State San Marcos. And as you can see behind me, I collect records. So I started collecting records in 2014. Uh, I started when I was around 13 years old and it's pretty much stayed the same for the last eight years. So contrary to what many would think, you know, being like, oh, your parents got you into this for sure. It was actually a family friend of ours. Uh, when I was promoted from eighth grade into a freshman in high school, I was given a gift box. And in that box were two things. Uh, one of them was a Time Life magazine with the biographies and history of the Rat Pack. So Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr. And under that were 30 or 32, can't remember exactly, uh, mint condition Frank Sinatra records. To quote one of my favorite luminaries, Henry Rollins, who you might know as the former lead singer of Black Flag, uh, he probably said it best. Uh, my records were always there for me. They never, they always stood at attention. They never insulted me and they were always there when I needed them. So depending on what mood you're in, you can be in a great mood and listen to power songs in a horrible mood and listen to sad songs. Really any mood, there is a genre and there is a song to go with it. So I catalog my collection through a website called Discogs and that gives me an accurate count. Uh, the last time I checked, I am just over 1200 records and I'm adding, I seem to be adding more by the day because I just bought a brand new one this morning. Well, primarily the genre that I have the most of would be rock, classic rock and more hard rock. But when it comes to a breakdown, it would probably be rock, jazz, soul and funk, and a little bit of everything uh, mixed in between. Uh, I jokingly like to refer that my collection has everything from Sinatra to Slipknot in it. It's hard to select a favorite because so many of these records have such great stories. Uh, however, one that sticks out is a jazz record that is regarded as the greatest jazz record of all time. For those that are familiar with the genre, I'm sure you know the names of Miles Davis, John Coltrane, Wes Montgomery, among so many others. Uh, the record that I'm talking about specifically is Miles Davis's you know, seminal masterpiece called Kind of Blue, which came out in 1959. I have a copy of that record that is known as a mistake pressing. When you look on an album or when you receive an album, you have the sleeve, which the record is housed in, and you have the record itself. On the back of that sleeve is your track list. And on the record, there is an inner label that also has the track list. When you look at side two of the sleeve and the inner label, both track lists are flipped. So one does not reflect the other. Now that pressing, there are thousands of them that came out, roughly around 15,000. And while that isn't a lot, it still doesn't make it a valuable record. That being said, because Kind of Blue and because of its age, it goes between $40 to one Luna tail, that same pressing for $25,000. Well, you can do a lot of things, some that's super simple and some that is super complex. I know people who have a record cleaner that's worth the same price as a used Corolla. I'm talking a $3,800 record cleaner. I do something that is less intensive. I have a micro groove brush and I have just regular screen cleaning rags. And that gets into basically the deep grooves and crevices of each album. Well, for those that are collecting and those who want to collect, it's the same advice across the board. Start with what and start with who you love. So whether that be in the classic rock realm, jazz, funk, fusion, 
rap, hip hop, soul, it doesn't matter. Start at what you would consider your musical home. And eventually, as that collection grows, more people will notice and go, hey, have you heard of this band? And if you haven't, stream them, look them up, or take the deep dive, buy a record. And if you like it, great. If you don't, that's completely fine. But like I said, start at your musical home, and soon enough you'll venture into the audible woods that is record collecting. If anybody is looking to expand their record collection or has any questions, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Needle Nose Records, or you can find me on my podcast, the Live from the Backroom podcast with John McAndrew. Uh, I interview local musicians within San Diego County, as well as many friends, and all we do is just talk shop about music. Thanks again.